Good morning, modern steaders. Burr, it's a brisk one below Fahrenheit out this morning. It's cold. I thought today we'd talk about our biggest challenges we faced here on the homestead during 2018. <laughs> it smells like onions in here, guys. I can smell the onions I gave you. Are you getting that ready to be goat food already? Yep. They're gonna <laughs> love you for that. I try my best to keep it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> How soon do you guys take your Christmas tree out of the house? You are a filthy cat. What did you get into, huh? Did you roll around in the firewood or what? Oh, you're crazy. You have a good you day. Stay out of we'll try to stay out of trouble. It's not too much fun. <laughs> All right, love stay you. warm. Yeah. Love you. Out. Better put another log in the fire. These goats want out. They just want their breakfast, really. Good morning, girls. You hungry for breakfast? Let's swap out your buckets. One. You can't climb on the tripod, girl. You're saying, where's my breakfast? You gotta be patient. You gotta be patient. Yeah, you gotta be patient. I know, I know. I've been sitting back and thinking on and off for a while, but the last week or two, quite a bit, of everything that we've done on the homestead, everything we've tried to do on the homestead this year, the good and the bad. And Did you finish all your pellets? Come on. That's some good hay there, Blossom. You girls are noisy chewers. Blow it out, this way. Hey, this way. The chickens of New York City are quiet this morning. They must be saving their energy to stay warm. Ah, oh, I forgot my gloves. Man. Good morning, girls and moose. See, you laid some eggs already. You gotta come out. There you go.
Moose, you're quiet this morning, buddy. You got nothing to say? That surprises me. Nothing? Come on. You should have one crow in you. No? Camera shy? Nothing? Come on, Moose. Wow. I guess Moose doesn't feel like crowing on the camera for us today. That's not like him. Using our sled to bring firewood in right now isn't that productive. Pulling too hard on the little bit of snow we have and then it's super slippery. Let's see if we can get the tractor running today. I'm hoping she'll start even though it was so cold out last night. We'll get the glow plug running for probably 20 seconds or so before we try starting it. Let it warm up for a while. Get all that hydraulic fluid warmed up. Takes some time when it's this cold out. Is that how you get so dirty? You come over where I keep the firewood and roll in it? What are we gonna do with you? I put the pumpkins all down here. They're all frozen. It's nice to be able to have them and just give them to the animals every once in a while throughout the winter instead of all at once. Have a flat tire. We need to fix that before we can bring any firewood in. We've had quite a few people ask us lately what have been our biggest struggles in 2018. There's been quite a few of them, but before I start I just want to say I'm not complaining at all. This is just talking about our struggles and challenges. And I honestly believe without struggles and challenges you cannot grow. You need a dark time in your life. I hate to sound down like that, but usually when times are dark or times are hard, you're learning and you're growing. And if you're passionate about it, you're gonna push through and you're gonna find a way to get there. But I personally believe without those times, we don't grow. We get stretched during that. So, our struggles sometimes, they're not sometimes, our struggles are hard when we're going through them. But if we step back and think on the other side, it's usually for me, I'm like, wow, look at, look at what happened from that. Thank you. One of the biggest sayings I live by, life isn't happening to you, life is happening for you. And even in those dark, hard moments, that is true. In the moment, it's hard. But, it is totally true if you step back and think afterwards how much you grew from that situation. This one's kind of hard to relate to that, but one of our biggest challenges was the weather. We were trying to do our gardens this year. We had all right luck, but we just had so much rain. And when it did rain, it didn't just rain a little bit. It was like a monsoon. We would get one, two, 
three inches within 15 minutes to a few hours. We have raised bed gardens and they'd be filled up with water. You'd put seeds in, we'd get a downpour. They'd get rotted. Then it would get super hot. The weather was crazy when we were trying to plant our garden. Then we got a little dry spell. We got the garden in, got stuff growing. We were able to get a logging company here. I'll put a link to that playlist right here. And we had our four acres of woods, but it used to be an old pasture, logged. We had it logged because it was all overgrown with big half dead pine trees. And every time we had a windstorm, the trees would fall down and the woods were so thick, you couldn't walk through them. So we got the woods logged. I don't know if that was before or after the garden time. It was around the same time. Then they came back. I think we had the woods logged first and then it was gardening season. We got the rain. The logging company came back and they stumped the land for us. And then they also bulldozed it. And while all that was going on, we got rain, everything got wet. So I wasn't able to get in and clean up and rake out the area that they cleared as soon as I wanted to. And as soon as I got it raked out and got seeds down, we got into monsoon season again and it was just coming down in buckets. We'd get two, three inches every rainstorm we got. So I had it raked out, we got the rain. Frustrating. Got it raked out again, the same spots, seeded it, it rained again. So the pasture area, I don't know what it's gonna look like. We got probably two thirds of it raked out. The other third, I couldn't rake it out because it never dried up enough for me to get down there with the Kubota and rake it out and seed it. So our biggest struggle overall was our pasture area. And I don't know what that's gonna look like this coming year. But the weather for sure has been very challenging. Um, this winter came in super early before we had a white Thanksgiving. We've had two feet of snow since before Thanksgiving. Now it's melted off some and now we're covered in ice. So we can't do a lot of outside projects right now. But that being said, having one of the most rainiest summers, I learned a lot about what we need to do to our homestead to make it so we're not so susceptible to all the rain, the amounts of rain, whether it's a lot of rain or it's drought. Now, that being said, that's also gonna take time. When you're dealing with situations like that, that's nothing we're gonna be able to remedy in a year or one season. So we're gonna have a lot of work, but we have a lot of things to keep in mind when we're doing this work. So it was a challenge, but we've learned and we've grown a ton through it. And over the years, we'll be even stronger and more resilient because of it. Then in all that same time period, we were trying to raise turkeys again this year. We've raised them in the past. Last year we didn't. We've always had great success with them. This year, we lost three turkeys, turkey pullets. We raised them up, they were doing good. We ended up having three die on us throughout the season. I believe we either started with, must we started with six or seven, and we had three of them die. And I believe all that is related to too much rain. The turkeys don't do good when it's wet out. We raised them in the basement, they did well. When they got big enough to go outside, I'd move them outside. One of the lessons we learned from that is we're gonna need a barn sooner than later so we can start all of our animals and house them in a better area if we need to, if we have a rough season. Oh, I just got to thinking about one of the fun challenges we had this early fall was when we kept getting skunks in the chicken coop. Oh, it was not fun at the time. But now looking back on it, I get a good chuckle of it. 
If you guys didn't see the videos we did on that, I'll put a link to that playlist right here. And I'm glad I got that on camera. Oh, guys, that was that was crazy. We kept we had skunks half come into the chicken coop one day, and then they kept coming back for a week or two straight. We ended up catching quite a few of them. I don't want to give it all away, just in case you haven't seen the videos. But that was a challenge, a struggle at the time. But now I can sit back, I can laugh about it, and we got some fun memories. Another big challenge was we decided to get dairy goats this year. We got Nigerian dwarfs. So trying to find purebred Nigerian dwarfs that are local, it's a little difficult. Um, we have never raised goats before. We have had chickens, pigs. Back years ago, we had horses at a different property. But goats was completely new to us. But we knew we wanted to get dairy goats because we wanted them for their milk. So we wanted to find one that was in milk because it takes a while to get a goat to be able to get bred. And then once they have babies, that's when you can stop milking them. So we searched and we looked and we ended up finding some. We found two babies. When we were there talking to the lady, she was saying that she was probably going to be getting rid of one of the mothers. I told her to keep her posted if she'd like to sell the mother. We'd pick her up the same time we picked up the babies. So we brought home Blossom and Buttercup, our two younger ones, and then Willow, which is the one in milk, which is Buttercup's mother. We brought her home. She had never been milked before. This was her first time kidding. And the lady we bought them from didn't have time to milk every day. Which is understandable because it's a time commitment. So Willow had never been milked. And I'd never milked any kind of animal before. So that was a learning curve and a bit challenging. But it, that was a good and fun experience and a good challenge. It seemed to be a bit more challenging, and the challenge isn't over yet. I'm not saying she's bred, but trying to get her bred so she'll have babies in the spring, and then we can continue milking her and get more milk, because we're trying to find out when she's in heat and bring it to the breeder. The challenge with that is goats go have a heat cycle. It's like every 18 to 21 days they're in heat, and a goat only will stay in heat for 12 to 36 hours, is what I've been told. And Willow only seems to stay in heat for about 24 hour period at the max. And then the lady we bought the goats from, she lives just shy of an hour and a half from here. So that's where we brought Willow to get bread. So we gotta find out, hey, I think she's in heat. And then we gotta pack her up in the truck travel an hour 15 hour and a half one way but right now we're hoping she's bred uh, was that two weeks ago we went I'll put a link to that video right here we've actually gone twice this year the first time we thought it worked but it didn't so this time we thought it worked so I'm not gonna say she's pregnant yet that has led us again to saying hey we need a bigger, better barn than what we have here on the homestead. If we have a bigger barn, we'll be able to have a better place to raise uh, turkey pullets in when they're younger. We'll be able to have a better place for our goats. And then our old goat building, we can keep and we can keep a male buck in there. Because we don't want a male buck in the same barn as our goats. Because they can taint the milk. And the male goats is stinky. So we want to have them in a separate building away from the dairy herd, or the milking herd. So every time we have a challenge, we learn something from it. We always are taking away something. And it's just helping us build and better our homestead and ourselves. Those have been our biggest homestead challenges that I can think of right now. 
personal challenges in 2018. This next one's more of a personal challenge and it's there's like two pieces to it. First, me and Gina had to decide if we wanted me to go full time on YouTube or not. I had an awesome job. The guy I worked for and the guys I worked with were great. I built new houses, did home remodeling. But we were doing YouTube at the same time. So it was like working two full time jobs at once. So it comes to the point you're always telling yourself, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. And then when it comes down to it, you're like, man, can we do it? Should we do it? It's definitely scary. I'm glad we did it. I love doing it, it's awesome. And then at the same time, after doing it for a while, full time, I've been doing it since August, I kind of got in my head going, am I good enough? Are we interesting enough? Man, I'm not good enough. So the biggest challenge for me this year, personally, has been working on my inner voice. I don't know what you'd want to call it. Sounds a little odd, but how you talk to yourself subconsciously plays a huge role in everything. It plays a huge role in how you feel, how you look at things. If you're in a crappy situation, can you be positive and look past it? I said one of the big things for me is is life is happening for us, not to us. And in the hard times, it's not easy. I've gone through some rough stuff in my life. I'm not going to share that with you right now, but in the times, whew, now that I look back on those things that I went through, I stop and I think, all that didn't happen I would not be the person I am today and I would not be where I am today some of those led me into homesteading and growing our own food I had anxiety really bad and a lot of that a lot of it has to do with how you eat it's not the whole answer but it's a big answer what you eat where you how your food is raised it goes on and on and on so if it wasn't for some crap that I went through, I wouldn't have found homesteading. And I love doing this. This is my passion. So going full time on YouTube for me has been a huge challenge because most of the time I'm working with myself. Then you can get you get awesome comments, but you can also get some really negative comments. And then you're not just working with yourself, you edit yourself constantly. You're watching yourself on the computer cutting, scraping, scrubbing, going back, listening to what you said. Did I say that right? Did I say it wrong? Man, I don't like how I say that. Man, and you're critiquing yourself. But I'll tell you what, as hard as it is, it's an awesome exercise to do, and you can learn so much about yourself. So it was a huge challenge, but I learned so much, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. The challenge isn't over with yet, not at all, but man, we're learning and growing from it. It's been an awesome experience, and I need to thank all y'all who watch the channel and support us. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do this. We are very blessed and thankful. So the biggest, follow your passion. If you guys can follow your passion, it'll lead you to where you need to go. The other thing I've been thinking about a lot is homesteading. Why homesteading? What does homesteading mean to me? And trying to break it down in like just an easy context. And one word that keeps coming back to me constantly is reconnect. Homesteading for me, it it means reconnecting to my food. And that was a big one because when I first started getting into homesteading, it was for my food. So it means reconnecting to my food, knowing where it comes from, knowing how it's raised, knowing what's going into my body, I'm not putting those chemicals in there. It's about reconnecting with the creation, reconnecting with the soil, learning how everything works. We live in such a huge, abundant creation. 
everything is meant to work together. And if it works together, there's just a huge abundance of everything. There is no waste. If you see somebody throwing food away or we throw extra food scraps away, we get a lot of comments. You shouldn't, that's so wasteful. When I say throwing away, I don't mean throwing it in the trash. We don't throw food in the trash. So if you're throwing it in the garbage, yes, it's wasteful. But for us, when we have, when I say throw it away, because well, we get comments, people saying, oh, that's so wasteful. We're not throwing it away. We're either composting it, 99% of the times we're feeding it to an animal, and they're turning it into either an egg, a meat byproduct. They're turning it into manure. They're pooping that manure out. We're composting it, and we're growing more food with it. Or we're giving it to the goats, and we're getting milk from them. So there's, when I say the world is so abundant, if we do it correctly, there's no waste, we just, the byproduct and we can turn it into something else. So reconnecting to me just means learning all that. Like I get to reconnect with creation and see how it works. It's just mind blowing. It's, it all, it's, everything is interconnected and connected. So the word reconnect, oh, I just keep going back to it and I love the word right now. Just reconnect, it's just so many things you can reconnect to can reconnect with your food, you can reconnect to the creation, you can reconnect to your family, there's just so much. When I say the word reconnect, what's the first thing that pops into your head? You ready to go out and check on the goats? Yeah. I take that as a yes, Pluto. You wanna go out? You wanna go out? Let's go. What are you girls doing, huh? Are you pregnant, Willow? Is that a yes? I'll get the hay and you can give it to him. Okay. Yeah. Did they get you? No. No, that's good. But I did, but the hay did get me. I got some of my boot. The hay got in your boot? Oh man. Oh, that sun feels so good. It's nice to see the sun the last couple of days. We haven't had much of it this winter, have we? Oh, chicken came out from under New York. They're hiding in New York City. What are you girls doing under there, huh? Hiding? Three, and I got two this morning. Here you go. Hold them for a minute. Moose must be under the yeah. trailer. <laughs> the eggs are cold, aren't they? I'm not gonna put them in your pocket because my hands are gonna fall off. Olivia already started taking the Christmas lights Did off. You know she was doing that? Nope. And then we, she hung them on her. She said she couldn't reach anymore. She's got them wrapped on a hanger. I had it wrapped that way because it's too thin this way to hold them. Okay. Well, I guess this probably worked too, huh? Yeah. Probably will um, mess it up on you. Works better than. Yeah, I just like I just took it off some of the tree and then I rolled it and then I just did that until I got to where. That means tomorrow we get to give that to the goats. Looks like a mistletoe ball. Uh -oh. All wrapped up. Uh, that's your mistletoe. That's the mistletoe? Yeah. 2018 was full of some huge challenges. But that being said, 2018 was a great year. I don't think you can grow without challenges. We grew leaps and bounds this year. Our homestead did. Us personally did. So to to grow, I, I believe you need to push through challenges, and that's when you do grow. I love the saying, life is happening for us and not to us. I just think that's something to always think about when you're in a rough spot. And remember, I know a lot of you guys are going through some extremely hard challenges, but after the dark is the light. If it wasn't for winter, we wouldn't have spring. And this is a dark season right now. But after the winter time comes springtime, and it's a beautiful season is the spring. So I just 
want you guys to remember, keep your chin up. If, you, if you're trying something new, if you're trying to grow, you're going to hit challenges, you're going to hit bumps in the roads, but that's normal. We need to expect them. We need to remember to be looking further, looking past the challenges. Don't just get stuck in today, but we need to persevere and just remember we have this, we can do it, and it's going to be awesome. I'd love to hear what some of your challenges are that you've been going through this year and what's on the other side of these challenges for you. Remember, stay positive and we can get through anything. We love you guys. Thanks for coming along on our journey with us. And we'll see you guys right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.